In our last video, we overviewed some of the options that you have for your book formats. We're gonna start with those low prep one page books to get started. Now you're gonna find this at the top of those eight engaging book format sheet, the top three. Now there are a lot of advantages to these one page simple books. Well, first of all, obviously minimal materials are needed. Many of these you can do with literally just one sheet of paper. In some cases, having scissors or a glue stick can be helpful, but is not required. Now these books are excellent for remote or at home instruction. Another advantage is that you can scale the size. While you can work with traditional copy paper to make a smaller piece, you can also work with 24 by 36 inch paper if you want and make them jumbo sized. They're also great because you can easily make reproductions. Many of these books here, if you see them expanded, start with creating the artwork first. You can see how once this artwork is created, you could easily scan and photocopy lots of them to make more. Now let's talk about how to make our first book, the eight page format. Starting with just a sheet of copy paper, we're gonna fold this into eight sections. Of course, that means starting with the classic hot dog fold. I always tell my students that my hot dogs are vegan hot dogs, but the buns are the same. Then you can open that up for a hamburger fold. Of course, you know, being as precise as possible is helpful. It'll make future steps a little bit easier. And after that, we're gonna bring these arms in from the side to kind of hug the center, simply line them up. Now with copy paper, you can use your fingers. I do like to press from the center out to minimize the chance of that fold getting an askewed angle. If you wanna be fancy, you could also use a bone folder or the back of plastic scissors. Both work great for folding. Now, once you have your eight pieces, we wanna make a cut uh, just in the middle. So if I flip this over, the goal is to tear from here to here. You can do this with scissors or by doing a hand tear method. To save time, I'm just gonna cut with scissors. All right. Be sure to remind your students that they are cutting on the side with the fold. If they cut on the open side, they're gonna to have to start over. Now from here, what we wanna do is with both your hands, uh, pinch these little mountain peaks in the center and we're gonna pull them out to make what looks like a plus shape from the top. At this stage, all you have to do is fold it together to turn it into that eight page book. It might feel a little bit awkward at first, but once you crease again, you're gonna be in great shape. So here we can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages ready to go. So now let's move on from the eight page format and talk about the accordion, a classic. Now in its simplest form, an accordion is simply any piece of, piece of paper that's been folded back and forth to create multiple pages. You could literally work with just a single page considering this your front cover and your back and you're done. Obviously, the more folds you have, the more pages you'll have as well. So what's great about the accordion is there are tons of variations you can add to this simple format. So for starters, you can just add a different type of paper to create the front and back cover by gluing it to the pages within. You can also work with more traditional hardcover options. Um, in this case, we were practicing marbling um, or repurposing old book covers here as well. You can also get pretty chunky with these. So I have, for example, this um, collaborative book of secrets. Um, for this one, by the way, super fun project. Every student wrote uh, a secret and then we exchanged them anonymously. And then you had to illustrate someone else's secret. Of course, make sure you talk about guidelines for what secrets are appropriate. Um, but this is still an accordion book. If you look at the top, you'll see that each individual student page was bound together with this hardcover on top. Here, this um, book about penguins, same thing. This is just some old foam cord that was scored and folded on the outside. These accordion books can also get super, super long. Um, this one is made from a few sheets of paper that were glued together, but you can see the potential to create something that expands quite a bit. All right, let's move on from the simple accordion and talk about a slightly more complex variation called the meandering accordion. So let's take a look at a couple examples of what this looks like, and then I'll show you how to make it. Now in its simplest form, it's still one sheet of paper. And as you go through it, you're gonna have um, four individual vignettes. What's different if I expand this, 
is the way that paper is fold and cut. So you can kind of see here, yes, you're gonna get lots of pages, but it nicely breaks them into these four different sections. To show you a more resolved example, let's look at this example I made for my students, highlighting four amazing astronauts of color. So as I flip through the book, I can expand my first vignette. Then I can move on to my second, my third, and my fourth. Notice one downside is you can't easily expand it completely, right? You kind of see each vignette wants to be seen by itself. And if I were to open this up all the way, you'll see it was created from one giant sheet of paper. So again, there was no glue involved in the pages, just specific folds and cuts to make this format. So let's make one. All right, so with the eight page book, we wanted to split our page into eight sections. For here, we need 16. And the format's up to you. It could be square, rectangle, any size paper will do. So let's start with our hamburger fold. We're gonna open that up. And again, we're gonna hug towards the center again. So this will give us, hopefully, four columns on our paper. We open that up, you can see one, two, three, and four. We're gonna do the same thing on the other axis with our hot dog fold. With little ones, I like to talk about finding your corners and making sure that all your corners are happy. And then I use my thumbs to squish from the center out. Let's open that up and hug towards the center again. Okay. So we're gonna open this up now, and the goal is to cut across three of these rows, alternating from top to bottom. So again, you wanna be careful not to go too far. Um, one tip is you can have students actually draw a physical line first with pencil, just so they know. I'm gonna dive right in. So I'll cut across one, two, three rows, and let's flip and alternate to the other side. One, two, three, and one last flip. One, two, and three. If everything went well, you should have an M or two pairs of pants, okay? At this point, you're ready to fold it up. Now for folding, it's really easy. You're just gonna alternate back and forth and it should happen kind of naturally. Once again, if anything needs to be recreased, you can go back and score or give it a good squish to get started. So there we have it. A couple final bonus thoughts about these three one-page book formats. The first is that these are really accessible to students of all ages, ranging from kindergarten all the way up to seniors in high school, and in some cases may offer opportunities to collaborate across grade levels as well. Another little tip to consider is that um, if you don't have access to scissors or just want to teach a new skill, all of these cuts can be done by making a perfect deckled edge tear, and I want to show you how to do that. In some cases, the aesthetic of the deckled edge tear is actually preferable to the more mechanical use of scissors. So, a couple suggestions if you wanna give this a shot. First of all, especially if you're using thicker paper, you might wanna consider creasing that fold both one time and then a second time by inverting it. The sharper that crease is, the easier the tear will be. Now from here, you wanna put the paper with the mountain peak popping up, right? You don't want it to be a valley like this. You wanna have a little mountain. You're gonna put both hands near the top. Um, sometimes if you want, you can get the tear started with just a little bit like that, just to kind of a twist of your fingers. I'm gonna squish the mountain together and then rotate my hands out like this. 
you're gonna have to scooch down a few times and you get that really nice natural tear. Now tell your students at the end is the danger zone. This is where sometimes things go a little crazy. So really just slow down for that last bit and you can get those perfect tears. All right, have fun with that. In our next video, we're gonna talk about one page books that are a bit more advanced.